for Messenger and everything else. Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, a.k.a. Big Sarge, large and in charge of my god thing on self. Woo! Get myself up off the shelf to find my greatest eternal wealth. Sitting here with me in front of me, I don't know where you happen to see him at, but it's my man, Whiskey Charlie, as he like to go buy white chocolate, Joe Dirt. You just never know which type of way he going to show up today. He looked like he a little normal, but y'all know it's early. So we going <laughs> to see what's going on with you, my man, uh, Whiskey Charlie. How have you been? And actually, you know what? Hold that thought because I know you up to something. So y'all know what it is. It's Grunt Speak. Speak Grunt. Well, we come through and we speak to you and you talk to us too. We talk about some things that we've been going through or some things that we've grown through and some ways to help you. Because this is what it's all about, man, for us to be able to help you and you be able to help us too to make it through, man. We've made it through battles in Iraq. We've made it through battles in Afghanistan. And now we have to make it through battles here in the USA on our own land, not in foreign lands, but our own land. So this here is grunt speak speak grunt by grunts for grunts where everybody is welcome but everybody cannot and will not be a member 11 b 11 charlie 0311 if you a marine you see you know what it is or if you have a family member that partake in anything that was close to infantry or that supported the infantry not close to the infantry. If you was infantry or you were supporting the infantry, then this message is for you too. This goes out to you. And we hopefully give you something to help you laugh, maybe get through some crying and uh, go through. But that's what we do. This may not be for kids, but I guarantee you, if your kids listen to some of the things that we say today, it's going to bless them in some type of way. So again, man, this grunt speak, speak grunt. Whiskey Charlie, what's been going on with you, brother? Oh, what's going on, everybody? Hey, uh, you know, everything's going pretty uh, pretty good over here. Just, uh, you know, work life. Uh, and then, of course, coming home and being busy. I just had my brother down for about almost a week. Uh, coming down to help me in to uh, install some flooring in my house. So, you know, you know how I do it, man. Keep him busy all the time. Always doing some type of improvement. Uh, and, and keeping a busy body because that keeps that mind that settled. So, uh, you know, enjoying life uh, and being very appreciative of uh, family, uh, you know, coming out of his way, taking his vacation. He doesn't get paid for it, but uh, came down and decided he wanted to help me out and still kept working, you know, every day he was down here. So much appreciation. And shout out to my brother up in uh, Virginia that uh, came down and did me some uh, good help out. And, uh, of course, I think I said it last time, but also still want to give another shout out. If you didn't listen last time, uh, my uh, younger brother, Mikey, just got to promote to it, got his E7. Nice. So shout out to my, yeah, shout out to him. You know, he's uh, doing big things up there in the VA, Virginia, and, uh, you know, uh, still out there doing the uh, hard things and uh, being a retention uh, uh, NCO. And that's probably one of the hardest jobs you can get out there. It's uh, probably harder than uh, being a uh, recruiter because the fact that you, you know, you, you gotta, you can't lie to motherfuckers that are already in. <laughs> 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 you can lie to people that hasn't been in, but uh, you can't lie to people that are in the sh already in boots. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I, hey, much respect for my, my brother up there, man. He's got a hard gig. Yes, indeed, he does. Tim, what's going on, brother? Thank you for tuning in. Please do us a big favor and begin to hit that share button and start sharing so we can make sure that everybody is on, get what they need tonight. As we talk about something fun in the infantry world, in the army world, just talking about life and weapons and how they helped you get through life. So before I jump into this thing, I'm going to actually turn it over a little bit to you, Whiskey Charlie. And... uh let you let you take lead on this thing, you know. Oh, Tim said he turned down his E7. Okay. Ooh. I heard yeah. that. I probably I got out early because I knew I didn't want to go for E7 to be honest with you because I didn't want to do all that paperwork that come with. <laughs> I knew staff sergeant was enough for me because then yeah. you get disconnected from the soldiers in the field. Although platoon sergeants are still in the field, they not getting to do what the line guys get to do. So, hey, Tim, I ain't mad at you. I got a buddy right now that's got E7 rank. 
Well, he's probably been acting first sergeant most of the time, and that's just driving him crazy some days. But anyhow, yes, indeed, Tim, way too political. Yeah. Uh, Whiskey Charlie, so you brought this, you, you brought this, this wonderful, amazing topic of, to us today about weapons. So what is it that you want to say? Or let's talk about some weapons that, uh, you know, that you enjoyed when you was in the army. And some of uh, you ain't got to tell us how many weapons you got. But if you still <laughs> partake in the weapons arsenal, man. So what you got hey. for us, brother? Hey, oh, look. I, I was about to say, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let, let, yeah, me, let yeah. me start this. Let me start. I'm about to challenge you, big uh, Sergeant Smith there. Hey, uh, look. Before we get started on that, uh, Sergeant Smith's going to kick off with our uh, one minute win, one minute war going on here. And then uh, we're going to get into our topic. So hey, let's kick it off, Big Sarge. I, I appreciate that, man, because in my excitement, I moved too fast. And just as I was saying, oh, to you, I was thinking the same thing. One minute win, one yeah. minute war, too. So what am yeah. I warring with today? I, to be honest, man, I don't know if I have too many big wars going on, but what I'm warring with today is just something that me and you just talked about for a brief second, you know? School's getting ready to go back in about two weeks here in the ATX and probably throughout Texas. And if y'all pay any attention to the news and what's going on, you don't know what's going to happen next with COVID and everything that's going on and, and trying to get your kids the jab and all that other thing. So... Uh, me and my wife has been talking about whether or not we're going to send our kids back to school this upcoming year. We kept them out last year, and this time we don't know what we want to do. So I think we're going to kind of wait it out a little bit and see what they're up to. But I know this for sure. It won't be a war if they're talking about wearing masks all day because I won't send my kids to school for that. I'll keep them at home, let them learn their way, sitting at their desk and doing everything and being able to get their break. So for me, that's about the only war I probably will be going through. Just waiting to see what the state, the school, the, the, the school district and the city going to do. Right. As far as a war. But my win um, for me today, I went out and I knocked out a five mile ruck in about 90 degrees anyway. And that's something that I normally do. So it's not a big thing, but it's been about a week since I've done that. And it felt good to get out there today. I beat the rain. It didn't show up. Um I actually, I have to start a job next week. I have a, uh, I have a job next week that I'll be starting uh, an assistant manager to some marketing and managing things. That's really gonna help move me forward in my, in my, that's in my what's dream. Your big charge. I see, I see. Yeah, big charge. yeah. that's gonna, that's that's gonna move me forward in my dreams and my speaking career. So plenty more people can hear what Big Sarge got to say as I look to inspire people in a different way. And what's so great about this job? I'm working for a grunt brother too. He's an old school ranger. So you know what that's gonna mm -hmm. be like. It's gonna be and hey, I show say, up on time. Listen to me. When I say old school ranger, I'm talking about Black Hawk Down. So I know this is gonna, <laughs> yeah. I know this is gonna be a fun time for me. It's gonna be interesting, but he's allowing me to do something that I've done in a long time in the army too. That's team leader squad position, squad leader, pretty much. What my role to turn out to be. So uh I'm pretty excited about that, and it should be interesting. So, for me, that's it, man. That's my one minute war. That's my one minute win. Whiskey Charlie, go on, give us what you got before you take us in. Um, let me see. Do -do 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 -do. Yeah, I got one thing for significant events kind of going on in the world, not this week. But you go ahead and give us your win and your war, brother. Oh, uh, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, just to piggyback what you said with the war thing, man. Hey, uh, it's my daughter's first year of uh, school, so I think uh, I, I I think we're on the same war right here on this path uh, when it comes to this. And uh, I'm thinking that uh, when it comes down to it, uh, she's required to wear a mask and or required to get a shot. Then they they can fucking kick rocks because uh, <laughs> I ain't getting my shot. My wife doesn't discuss it. She ain't getting her shot. So uh, you know what? No, nah, I, I don't think so. So uh, you know, it's nothing. You know, look. These, these shots affect everybody in different ways, and uh, I'm not ready to put my daughter or myself or my wife in any type of position mm -hmm. that where I'd rather myself, when I go to work, wear the mask and not worry about a shot. But outside that, uh, I don't want no shot to be affecting my daughter because, you know, it's, uh, somebody else says, oh, you must have it, you know, and then it ends up ultimately hurting my uh, my daughter. So fuck that you know I, i'm not we're not she's not going to get it I'll, I'll homeschool her first year it's shitty but at the same time you know what yeah it, it is what it is but uh outside that you no know, i would say 
my win this week or this last week, I would say, is uh, get my get my house uh, into a, even a better place. You know, hey, uh, piece by piece, uh, it's coming along. Uh, and uh, you know what? I was just uh, discussing with uh, big uh, big Sarge over here at uh, you know, hey, you know, I, I'm got a lot of things coming my way here in the future. Right now, it's kind of a little bit of a struggle. You know, so I guess you consider it a war, but it's also a win at the same time. Uh, you know, I put myself in this predicamentation, so realizing that I put myself in it is is a win. But the war is on uh, the war piece on that is that I put myself in a position of uh, being a little tight. So, but outside that, man, uh, my win is just uh, hey, living living the dream, man. Uh, just keep pushing, keep driving, because that's all it's gonna take is me just keep doing what I do every day. You wake up, go to work, do my thing live my life and then don't let anything drag me back. Cause ain't nothing drag me back. I'm gonna keep pulling it. That's what's up brother. Hey man, you know, I, I have to tap into a little bit of whiskey, Charlie, cause I've been tuning in and listening to what he had to say. And he said he had, to, he put himself in a position where things got a little tight, but Hey, it's man love Thursdays. If it ain't tight, it ain't uh -huh. right. I'm oh, just <laughs> hey, look, baby, they don't even gotta be tight. Look, man love Thursdays. I know some of y'all fucking uh, infantry men out there is loose than a fucking goose. <laughs> yeah, I kind of figured that'd be something to get you going, man. But hey, you know, sometimes we do put ourselves in sticky situations. And you know what? It's just like me going out today on my ruck. And um, I've been giving my body a little bit of a break sometimes. I went to the doctor like a week ago and they told me what I already knew. Hey, Big Sarge, Mr. Smith, you got the knees of a 60 year old brother. So how did that happen? Well, I told y'all 15 years in the infantry, high school sports and all that other stuff. You can't give me nothing to help me, but hey, you put yourself in those positions and you continue to work your way out. You know what I'm saying? And that's one thing we definitely learned being in the infantry, being in the army and being part of the infantry. Sometimes you make a decision that you think is going to be right. And it actually, you know, don't turn out the way you think, but you have to do it anyway, man. So talking about the little bit, talking to, uh, about the coronavirus and the shots and all these things that's going on in the world today. That was one of the significant things that I wanted to say. And we kind of pointed this out last week, if I believe I might've mentioned it for a split second. I believe it's September the 1st that I've heard that um, the uh, United States Armed Forces will be forced to take the vaccine if you are part of the military, Reed. And yeah, that's what that too. That's going to be, and I believe that starts again September the 1st, and that's going to be interesting to see how that shakes out and how that plays out, because if you have guys that's just looking to get out during peacetime and doing other stuff that, you know, say they're going crazy or they can't deal with it, whatever they went through, when you talk about giving people the jab or a shot that they don't want to go through, this is going to be interesting um, to see what our country is going to do and how, how they could just, you know, mandate what they putting in your body on you. But I guess... If you sign that contract, they say you don't belong to you no way. <laughs> hey, look, I seen an old boy, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, President. Uh, he came out and said that, the, you know, the, for all states to pay everybody 100 bucks, they go whop a $100 fucking bill to get the shot, man. Hey, I, there's people out there some struggles, but uh, I know uh, my fellow people are like me. Who gives a fuck about you can take that fuck hundred dollar bill and stick it up your ass, man? They're like, yeah, ain't no, a uh, hundred dollar bill. My medical bill from going there and getting everything else done is gonna be more than a hundred dollars. So fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that. You hey, gotta be kidding me. Hey, it's the, it's the army's uh, trying to twist your arm, man. Get the fucking out of here. Like you said, man, I can see a lot of people just dropping like flies, man. We're going to have the weakest fucking military uh, that we've had in a while because you're going to try to force government people to have shots, man. You're forcing people that don't want shit like that. You're not going to get anything out of them. It's best to give them the option. If you want it, go get the fucking shot. Give them the option. But outside that, it, it ain't helping any. You, you, it ain't helping any at all. You know what? Everybody's body is going to react different to everything. You know, mm -hmm. when I drink six beers, whenever you drink six beers, it may body, our body reacts to it two different ways. So at the same time, shots, no shots, you know, I had, I had the COVID when, before I even came out to be named COVID, but I survived mm -hmm. it. I, I, you know what? I got up, I fucking got to work, did my thing. Everything else I missed. I think I went home early one day just because the fever got pretty high. And they told me, hey, we don't know what the fuck's going on with you. Just go home and 
take some Advil in this that, and ever. So I laid over at my dad's house while he was out of town and uh, laid at his house and slept. Slept yeah. the fuck off. Yeah. I know uh, one of my old battles, one of my old soldiers who's an EMT, Doc Owens. Shout out to Doc Owens. He experienced COVID too. And I don't know where it's at, but I know it was on his Facebook page. He had did a number of videos and talked about, you know, being separated from his family and dealing with things like that for a short amount of time. And he was right out there on the front lines, even back when they were storming the cap, not storming the Capitol in DC, but when they was out here in front of the Capitol in the ATX in Austin, you know, he was down there working and doing things like that. So that has to be, you know, a tough thing to have to be away from your family. I, uh, I know me and my family has been COVID and flu free and I haven't taken the vaccine in over 10 years, G. So, I, uh, yeah, I pretty, I pretty much trust what I'm doing and what I'm doing must be all right. And if it's not, I deal with it when it comes around. I can't worry about what I don't have and what I don't know is going to be. So you have to be careful with all these conspiracies and things that's happening. Jump in these comments real quick. Tim said, uh, won't be the first time the army gave me something that I did, didn't want. Ain't that the truth? Like that egg omelet MRE. <laughs> but, um, that is very true. He said, uh, it will happen. Soldiers don't have a choice. Yeah, I know that to be true. Soldiers do not have a choice. And I was talking to one of our other buddies who does a lot of work for Grunt Speak Speak Grunt in the backgrounds, ATX, DJ Knox, code name Knox. And we was talking earlier and I'm like, yo, for all those malingers or shammers, whatever you want to call them, or all the guys that just don't want to be in anymore, this is definitely going to be something that they play to their advantage of how to get out or attempt to get out. So it's it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm just grateful that I'm not in a position that I'm still under contract and I have to deal with that. So I say a big old two hand salute. Yep. A, a big old two hand yep. salute to all my brothers and sisters that still serve and that's going through. You have to do what's going to be best for you and your family. But at the end of the day, man. We signed the contract, you signed the contract, and a lot of us going to have to do what they say, but it's an interesting time. You know, I've never experienced anything like this in our world, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, Terry says, shout out to Terry. Thank you for joining. Appreciate that. If you are healthy, you don't need a jab, not an anti-vaccine. If you need it, take it. Hey, I agree. I'm not anti-vax. You got to do what works for you. I'm just anti-vax and me and my family too. Uh, Tim hit us back, say anti-nerve agent was experimental during Desert Storm and they made us take it. Yeah, I did take the what's the name, but it wasn't man, it wasn't uh, mandatory. Like when I went to Iraq in 06, I had to take the anthrax and I think I took my first two. I think it was an anthrax. Yeah, it was that anthrax shot or whatever the hell it was. I had to take my first. I took my first two shots. And then, you know, if you miss your third or you miss a shot, you have to start you start for one. Yeah. yeah, start phase red. <laughs> yeah, I like the hell with that. It's just going to have to get me. So yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not I'm hey, I'm telling you what, that, that they medics were the, uh, I don't know, or medic or if it was fucking, you know, uh, the office that was the worst at keeping shot records. But every time oh. I turn around, I, they, they, I could not have a damn shot record <laughs> worth of shit. Yeah. Army don't army don't do well with paperwork. I guarantee you, Big Sarge can probably, and that might be something I do for next week. I may go through my old equipment if I slow down long enough in my tough boxes where I keep all my army stuff and see if I can find that old medical shot record, that old yellow card, because I know I yeah. got it. And that was one thing that was great about when I uh before I left Bravo 141 and I was working as a supply sergeant before I went to Egypt. I was able to get a copy of all my medical medical records and all the paperwork that the army had on me. So that was a good thing. And then shout out to Sergeant Abbott. If you out there somewhere, Sergeant Abbott, Sergeant Palayo, Sergeant Aldo, yep. all those yep. people that was working in one four one in the office, they made sure to give us a big old file with everything. Oh, I had. still got that bad boy. Oh, Hell, I got yeah. that. <laughs> still got that bad. Boy. Hey, look, I made sure I kept my fucking uh, CS. Uh, Fucking that certificate. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that shit. Yeah, yeah, OC spray. That yeah, OC spray. Yeah, <laughs> fuck that shit. I, I got much respect for the MPs out there on that one. God damn, I had to get that on a yearly base. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Tim says, uh, 
Tim says he always have a copy. Yeah, I know I got a copy in there. I'm like thinking right now in my mind, it's in one of those little black accordion folders that USAA, the bank, used to give us out for free when you went through the, the mold process. I have my old shot record, the yellow card, and one of those things right now. But um, Tim says, I, I have my medical records. Laugh out loud. Hey, that's important to have, man. You got to keep those. And then Terry hit us with my first appointment was over was overseas in Italy. I had to take a lot of shots just to be stationed over there. I haven't had a serious illness since. They pumped me full of a lot of things. I think I'm good. Won't be taking the vaccine. Yeah, you know, um, one thing's for sure. As an army, as an army guinea pig, I have no clue what they stuck in me. I just was reading the stuff on the shot record. <laughs> I didn't understand anyway. So only thing I know I turned out and I walked away from was that uh bird swine flu shot they attempted to give us in 09 before we went to uh Iraq the second time. I was able to slip out of that line, but yeah. So now that we didn't talk about that, we didn't got those things off our mind. Don't forget, man, if you got a one minute win, a one minute war for this week, for the last two weeks or anything you want to speak on, please drop that down in the chat. And earlier today, I was on the live for Grunt Speak talking a little bit. And I want to give y'all this, too. We've have to ask this a time or two. If anybody want to join the crew, I ain't talking about you have to be full time. I'm just talking about you want to jump on a live and talk about some things that's on your mind. Hit us a comment in the uh. Hit us a little something in the comments, and I'll make sure I'll be able to send you a link, and then we can pull you on and see how that go. All right, now that we didn't burn 20 minutes, and we can actually get to the topic that we have on the flow. Let's talk weapons. Yes. We talking about Army. We talking about infantry. Whiskey Charlie, why don't you kick it off and tell us about some weapons or what even came to your mind about this? Because you know it's some gun bunnies out there. Hey, hell yeah, dude. Like, hey, one of the reasons I brought this topic up because it, I know it just gives everybody chubby just talking about something they either shot in the military, something they have at home, something they wish they had in, in the military that they were able to shoot. Maybe selecting your own, like maybe going into the military and you're able to select your own rifle or machine gun or whatever else to just shoot. I'd like to hear from our uh, people that they're watching out there is what would you like the military to carry or something that you carry at home that you would like to be able to go overseas with to have on your side and be able to shoot, you know, and be combative with, uh, whether it was a pistol, maybe, Hey, maybe it's machine gun. Maybe, maybe you're talking about heavy, heavy machinery. Maybe you're talking about light, something that you can roll with. Uh, I can tell you what, when I went through a basic, I think the most exciting thing that I got to fuck around with. And I would say was, is a grenade. Like, I don't know what it is about a grenade, having a grenade in your fucking hand, man. And be able to uh, pull that thing and throw it and just feel the concussion off of everything, man. That just, I tell you what, it not only gets my dick hard, but it also gets my dick <laughs> hard, man. I'm telling you what. Yeah, buddy. Hey, I think when I was, uh, when we were throwing grenades my first time before I became infantry, it was a little bit nerve wracking for me. I did watch a soldier get, get snatched up and get a little bit of water while counseling. And throughout the back of the uh, throughout the back of the foxhole, <laughs> you know, you supposed to pull the pin, throw, yeah. and then get back down. Of course, he wanted to look up and see. Yeah, yeah that wasn't that wasn't happening. That, happening. Get your ass that wasn't that, happening. Bro. So, grenades was exciting too, but uh, for me, I think it was more so the, or the machine guns. You know. It was the machine guns for me, and I definitely started off with that 249 because I could carry that all the time. With my little, my smaller frame, it wasn't mm -hmm. too hard to maintain. It was pretty light. I think it was 16.7, uh, 14.9 modified with the uh, collapsible butt stock and the short barrel, things like that. So that was pretty, that was pretty awesome. And of course, I like the 240. I just didn't want to carry it a long time. Hey, now when it comes around to you know, you know, choosing those. Yeah, choose one, and then now you had to go back to uh, the armory and have one cleaned and prepped and ready to go. Which one would you like to carry with you outside of that? That's the big question. You know, two forty, uh, you know, two forty and two four nine. You know, two forty is a lot bigger. So to me, I think it had a lot less parts compared to two four nine when you take it all apart and get them cleaned up. But uh, which one would you decide? Uh, to, you know, I'm, I, I can definitely get this one cleaned up and uh, right right before I went back to the. Uh, back to armory with it and uh, get that green to go before you're, you know, having to be held back. 
I realized though, for me, the bigger the weapon, the easier to clean because the parts yeah. were bigger. Yeah. So I would definitely take a 240 to clean over a 249 or M16 and, and even cleaning a 50 cal. Cleaning a 50 cal wasn't hard at all either for me, you know, because the parts are bigger. Once you get to the yeah. M16 and things like that, it's too many small crevices. But here's yeah. something else that I wanted to do. Here's something else that I had to do as people are dropping down in the chats. Terry said the Mark 19, 40 miller, 40 millimeter, boom, boom. You already know. And uh, Tom asked, thanks for joining, brother. He said, oh, yeah, keep talking about them machines. Something that happening downstairs. I don't know. Like, <laughs> hey, man, <laughs> love Thursday. Hey, let's, let's talk about it, baby. <laughs> I don't know if something happening downstairs at his house for real or like when you, you know, you doing a, a movement and something well, happened hey, downstairs and you got to clear the room with that machine gun. I, yeah, hey, we don't, we have to clean up in the living room here real quick. <laughs> so here's. Here's something that I wanted to do, you know, because there's so the um, the the time frame that most of us were probably in to differentiate from year to year. You know what I'm saying? I know it's people yep. that probably got in. My first time joining the army was in 99. You know, it's probably people that jump on here that's probably got in in the late 80s, in the early 90s. I remember when I got in, I was still uh and when I joined the National Guard in Michigan, um, I was messing with the pig, the M60. And yeah, okay. the, the M60, wow. yeah, the okay. M the 240 replaced the M60. Now the pig was something that was something nice, you know what I'm saying? I, you know, it had some rough times that they break down on you, they go through, but what they call the pig, the M60 was a nice machine gun too. It was heavy, but the 240 was definitely a little bit more efficient. But I like the pig as well, the M60. Tim says uh, the Kimber 1911 for a sidearm. Yeah, I've heard that a lot about the 1911. Yeah, and just like, uh, yeah. just like the old school infantry uh, M14, I believe it was. Yeah. M14. So since I'm going to just be honest with you, Big Sarge is not a... Uh, Big Sarge is not a gun bunny. Big Sarge is not a gun nut. And I know I said, let's talk weapons and the weapons that you enjoy to shoot and the weapons that you may have with, you know, you can probably only have an M4, 1911, some things like that. Or how many you do have, you don't have to put that down in the chat. But I don't have any more weapons. And the only weapon that I had was a 30 odd six. And <laughs> okay. I think for me... Okay. I think for me, it was just where I came from. Like maybe it was my mindset. Growing up in Detroit, I didn't own guns. I didn't have guns. And it was just like, yo, I didn't want to get that two year sentence back in the day. And when I got into the military, I just messed with guns. But of course, you're in the military. So it wasn't one of those things that I fell in love with. But it's like, I think, I don't know if I said this last week or I said to somebody, it takes me back to we were soldiers. Hey, if it goes down for the zombie apocalypse, It'll be some on the battlefield. <laughs> when, when, no offense, and I'm just going to poke a little fun at the, oh. at, at the people that's been jabbed. When all the jab people turn into zombies, it's going to be some unjabbed people who ain't going to be able to pull a trigger because they're going to be like, oh, my God, they're human. I take their weapon and then I do it. Like <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's dying. Hey, bitch, you better watch, watch out. No, no. hey, look, when, when, uh, go ahead. Hit, hit him up with who, who's saying something down there. Mm-hmm. Thomas said, uh, I wish they would have given us the 1911 over the Beretta. Yeah, I heard that a lot. Getting that 1911 or that uh, old school, I think, is the Colt, the 45. You know what yep. I'm saying? Getting that over yep. the Beretta. But you know how the Army go. The Army go with the cheapest bidder. They're going with the cheapest bidder. They're not going with the most effective, the most stopping power, or the most efficient. They're going with the cheapest bidder. But getting back to that, it made me look at something that I thought was interesting. I had to go talking weapons. I had to go look at the history of U.S. Army weapons and some of the things that they use. And if you go back to early America, 1786, 1833, they was using the musket, G. No. Like, <laughs> yeah. That shit out of come on, come on, motherfucker. <laughs> That's about to go down. <laughs> I done fire my son of a bitch. I'm like, I feel like <laughs> Hey, you know yeah. what? If if they were infantry, they were good at doing that. You know, you're just kind of emotion right there. You know, I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I I had to go back and look at a little bit of history, and you know, Google's a wonderful tool, but you got to have the right keyword. So it's just hard to type in, you know, 
weapons used by the army. And then you get all sorts of stuff. But so, excuse me, in 1786 to 1833, the weapon of choice was the musket. You know, it was the principal small arm used by the army in the War of 1812. It was a copy of the caliber 0.69 French model. And so from the musket, they moved on to, oh, I think it was the musket version two. Yes, it was. It was the version two of the musket, which fired a 0.58 uh, caliber uh, weapon. And it was a little bit more efficient, not as slow to load and things like that. And then you move on a little bit further. They talked about the 45 caliber trapdoor rifle that they use in the regular army through 1894 the 1902 and i'm like man they've had some interesting things and that's when they introduced the bayonet too that was one thing i wish i would have got to use you know by the time you got to the m4 you wasn't putting no bayonet. <laughs> you weren't using no uh bayonets no more but i do remember in 99 the first time i went to basic training and i was doing a combat engineer we had the uh run a bayonet obstacle course and we actually had to fix bayonets and uh, stabbed the little, stabbed the little Viet Cong, you know, that was out there on the uh, on the training field. So I thought that was pretty cool. That was pretty interesting too. But that was never anything that you know you had to experience in the two thousand. So as yeah, you no, to that, that, yeah. When it comes to that, yeah, definitely didn't uh, didn't have to mess around with anything like that. But I, I would uh, before I forget here, because uh, you know my little mind here. But uh, I would say. One of the next funnest, uh, yes, uh, heavy machinery guns that I got to shoot was either between the, the uh, definitely the ITAS. I got to you know mess around with that. I did some training, of course, on the ITAS, and uh, to see the videos and everything else of them, you know, don't not even happen to hit direct target with it, but you can hover over top of it and actually blow it up. And then also uh, the Mark 19, man, Mark 19 was a was a fun thing to shoot and blow some shit up with. So. Definitely the grenade launcher you know, laying down rounds and uh, just filling, you're just blowing some shit up. I mean, I don't see how you don't see shooting these type of guns that not give you a chubby. Yeah, definitely. The army does do that to you and they kind of screw you over, man. You join the infantry and you play with all these high speed weapons and then you get out and you just got to go back to regular old, you know, weapons. <laughs> you know, no fully automatic, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. No machine guns. Yeah. Well, not <laughs> legally, of course. Yeah, exactly. Here, here goes your little uh, single shot pistol here. You're allowed to shoot this. Like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, this stuff has no boom to it. I Tim want something said, that fucking like some shit up. Tim says, uh, what is the max effective range of a bayonet? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you see the white in their eyes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> when you want me, bring me down a spread. Terry Bullard. When you want me, bring me down the spread. Okay, I guess that means bringing them on the show. I'm, 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 I'm confused, Terry. You got to give me a little bit more detail on that one. I'm sharp, but I'm dull right now on that one. So as I continue to look in the history, that's what it was called. It was called the M1 Garand. And that came yep. in, in uh, from 1926 to 1956. And that was the first semi-automatic rifle in the world to be generally issued to the infantry. The army began looking for a replacement for the M1903 rifle. So the M1 Garand, that was when I had the extra long bayonet on the end of it. And unfortunately, I don't have it set up to where I can show y'all the picture, but I'll do it for you next week when I get back with my uh, tech guy who's down there below. So from the M1 Garand, as you move into 1954, they come to the M16. And you know how that thing go from the A1 to the A4 to the M4. The M16 is probably ain't going to ever go anywhere. That's going to be, you know, with the army for till we start getting those space weapons. That's going to be with the army for a very long time. Uh, downside to the grand is when you are empty, everyone knew. Yeah. Uh, Tim Stryker all the way in and all the way out. Do, 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 do. <laughs> when do you want me to bring down Mr. Guns again? Hey, it's, it's, it's what you're talking about. That's my uh, that's my uncle on my wife's side. Hey, he brought down 
like six, seven different, oh, well, I don't know about that many, but four or five different uh, uh, rifles, handguns, and stuff like that. Went over to uh, one of my dad's friend's house and went out there and shot him out in there. So, man, it was pretty badass, so shooting the, uh, the automatic uh, shotgun that he had. Uh, I want to say uh, it, it was a fucking sweet ass gun. Then we shot the SKS and we shot, of course, all different types of guns that day. So, uh, you know, that, that, that was uh, some fun shit, some range in the backyard type shit. So when he said a range in the backyard, mm. you don't have to wait for anybody else to tell you to fucking go. You just go. Just get out there and just lay it down, baby. Yeah, that's definitely. What, hey, well, thank that you for that. Shit. Thank you for that, Tim. Tim says he disagree, and that was my statement on the Army might keep the M16 forever. He said he disagree because Coke now is Chinese, and so he see them going away soon. Well, yeah, I definitely give you that because we probably won't continue to purchase from them, or if we do, you know how we do. We just put made in America or assembled in America too. So hey, how you got to do it? Drop in the firing pin. Yeah. <laughs> it's America. Hey, but I'm about to say like. <laughs> I learned that from even uh, vendors through uh, through Home Depot that uh, all they have to do is put one piece, one piece from the USA in there, and it, it could be stamped with "Made in the USA." That's, That's it. all it has to do. It could be just one little piece. That's it what could it be. Does. It could be a screw in that motherfucker, and "Made in the USA." And just just going a little deeper, but I, I hear you, Tim, because I don't know enough about weapons to know. But hey there, Nova Lee. How are you doing? She looking like I could shoot some stuff today. I just got my focus on right now. Yep, she licking her trigger thumb. She like, I'm ready. I'm about to light it up. I'm about, I'm about, I'm about to light it up. I think I can get my sight line in here. <laughs> but um, so that was interesting. You know, they switched over to the M16. And then to be honest with you, Wow, and the, the bayonet switched tremendously from about 12 inches to about four inches. So they switched over to the M16, and I'm like, okay, this isn't everything that I wanted to see. So I had to dig a little bit more further, and some of you guys mentioned some, some weapons, some 1911s and some M9s, and of course I was able to go on uh, Wikipedia. Well, you know, most of it ain't true, but I know all these guns on here probably is something that came through, and they had a whole host of things from the M9 that's used by the United States, the M11 that's used by the United States, the uh, M17 and the M18. And I've never seen any of these things. I've never heard of them because, I'm again, I'm not a gun nut. But then when you move over into the submachine guns, you got the, yeah, uh, yeah, the APC Pro K. I got to be able to show you all a picture one day. And then you have the, infamous m16 and the m4a1 now they have on here what's called an m16 model O, but it actually looks just like a scar it looks just like a scar heavy that is why i bought kimber yeah nice i've heard of kimber as well grease gun yes the grease gun was a, one of those awesome ones too because when i was doing my research that was something that came up right away and if i'm not mistaken that might have been the Quran, was it yeah. So when you go a little bit deeper, and this one goes off into all of that, if you ever interested to know kind of a history on the weapons that the Army may have used, not just our Army, but other armies as well, you can definitely hit up that wikipedia.com and they give you a whole list of things that I found pretty interesting. And for the Army, they have on here the 500 mil shotgun. Now, my first tour, we were able to have a sawed off shotgun, and it was definitely good for breaching. It was definitely good for breaching. It was definitely good for going in rooms and clearing things out if you didn't have any more flashbangs. And a shotgun is one of those things, especially being in Texas. You from Texas, you in the South, you know about having a shotgun in the house. You can go down to the local Piggly Wigglies or Walmart and get a shotgun. That might be, you know, one of man's favorite weapons right there because close range. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to be a bad day for somebody. You know what I'm saying? But here's what I learned truly about weapons in the Army. As times change in the, in the Army, it wasn't even about the weapon that you had in your hand. It was about this weapon and how and when to use that weapon. Because things change so much and the rules of engagement change so much. So if you didn't use this weapon the right way and you used that weapon the right way, it can make for a long day for you. It can make for some trouble for you too, you know? 
the blooper gun. Well, now you ever heard of the blooper gun whiskey, Charlie? Tim, you gotta you 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 have to enlighten us on that one, brother. We should have kept the blooper gun. Is that code name for something else? Because I don't know what the blooper gun is. <clears throat> Again, you talking to you talking to a rookie over here when it comes to weapons. So you have to tell me about the blooper gun. But you know what? Whiskey Charlie, with all this going on, and you hear all this talk and conversation about Second Amendment rights and how they really attempting to paint the uh a bad picture on an M4, because you know when some School shootings happen, club shootings happen, or mass shootings happen here in America. Nine times out of ten, a person got an M4, you know, and they just act like it's the worst thing in the world. But it's like, what do you think you need in your arsenal today just at home to protect your family in the smallest sense? You know what I'm saying? Because if it gets a little bit more crazier than this, ah, grenade launcher prior to the 203. Okay. Okay, now the 203 was a nice a nice little attachment to your M42, but I have to say I like the 320 cuz it detached in that way and now you got two weapons. I use a sling that one over my back. So <laughs> I didn't have to carry the extra weight, you know, from the 203. Not that it was that heavy, but when you could take off that 320 off the Indio M4 and just rock with that, then that made it a little bit easier and you just strap it to your back sling it across your back and you kind of spin that thing around when it's time to get down. But the load, it wasn't as good as low in the 203. Oh, yeah. That wasn't Not good at all. Ah, Not fun fact. We had to turn around the hand grips on a 320 because some special person shot himself in the hand with a training round. Yeah. Damn. Got his hand too far <laughs> on the uh too far up on the post, and his literally his hand was sitting right there. When he squoze the trigger, the round bounced off the bottom of his hand. The only thing that really saved him was he had a glove on. So hey, that look, was hey, interesting thing. Hey, look, I remember us uh, right before I think it was in Fort Hood that we were doing it, but uh, we were doing a 50 cal um uh, doing a 50 cal range for certification because mm -hmm. we you know we're, we're we're mobile and stuff like that and i remember being on top of the humvee and uh i was like maybe a third or fourth iteration that was going through and as i was going through the iteration I, once i got up there you know of course you know fucking it's for a hood it's hot it's fucking texas heat and everything else and of course two or three iterations before me was shooting all like you know 20 30 rounds through it well, mm -hmm. I, I remember getting up there and we we're shooting on the range and uh, remember pulling it back, you know, finding my target and pulling the trigger. As soon as it hit that butterfly, it shot and it it locked up. So I racked it, went back at it, went, uh, got to my next target. It popped up, did that two or three times. And I remember hearing that uh, guy that was watching the range over top. He goes, I think we got a 50 cal sniper over here with that. Uh, with that mod deuce that we had on top of the home V over there, because every time that I would shoot one round, I'd hit the target. It would drop, but the next one, uh, but it would lock up every time. And every time I was doing, I was doing single shots with wow. that son of a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks right there. That, that sucks big time when you take your 50 cal and you have to turn it into a sniper rifle. Speaking, <laughs> of, speaking of sniper rifles, as I'm scrolling through this list of uh, weapons used by the military, I had just came across some sniper rifles and they don't have the Barrett on here. I don't think. I think 243 was like one of the one of the better ones that they have, I've heard them talk about. For uh, sniper rifles? Yeah, it was like for long shots, 243. Yeah. yeah I've heard that, them talk they, about it. They have a, and I don't even see that one on here. I see, uh, the, of course, the, the, Mark 14 and they have a uh, M110 SAS and, then they have the 2010 ESR. They have a few things on here. None of them I'm too familiar with. Shout out to a uh, code name Thibodeau, who's running at Pro Patriot Ranch. Patriot Ranch, and he does. Uh, he's a sniper, and he does a lot of training out there. And I've I've watched him post on Facebook, and he has some long range, 500 meters, you know, and things like that on his property where he's doing a lot of training. Okay, here's the Barrett. 
the Barrett right here, but it's actually the Mark 22 ASR code name, the Barrett, <clears throat> Barrett 50 cal. And that's a big beast though. Now I haven't seen it. I've never shot it. I've seen it. And that doesn't look like one I would want to, you know, have to walk around with either. Now when you got to fire it, that would be cool. But to walk around and have to carry it, not so much. Look up Carlos Hatchcock. I will definitely look up Carlos Hatchcock and see what he's about and see what they're talking about. But it's just going to be interesting, especially if they do something crazy like attempt to outlaw weapons. That's going to create a civil war because you're just not taking weapons away from Americans because it's real people that love their weapons. And I know every infantry platoon had that one gun nut in 06, 07. I can remember this guy, code name Goodwin. This dude knew about every weapon in Army history. He was like a, a, a weapons expert. Any weapons that we found in Iraq that we confiscated in Iraq, he knew about them, how to break them down. If he didn't know how to break them down, you give, you leave him the weapon for about an hour or two. He can tell you everything that it do and how to go through. It would be an outlaw if it happened. Oh, yeah, it would definitely be an outlaw if they attempt to take away weapons. That's going to cause a civil war. Oh, yeah, because you got you to think that it's not just military people. You, you, you've got police officers that are gun enthusiasts. You've got, you know... You know whether you call it call them rednecks, hillbillies, you you call them hood rats, hood people, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call people. You know, look, everybody, you gotta have gun enthusiasts of and all races, every religion, everything else, man. You, you're gonna have issues, and, and you're gonna cause a civil war. It ain't gonna happen because it's gonna be ultimately you're gonna try to turn police and military against people that they also love and everything else, and they're gonna turn around, they're gonna turn the shoulder on. Of one or two, and then you, you got to think about it. Every military person turns the shoulder on one or two, the number is just going to be greater and greater for the people that's going to be against the government. Now, I know, yeah, that's very true. And then it's just um, gun behind every blade of grass. <laughs> and then it's just, what's the name? It's too much money involved. You have the NRA and all these other special groups and these lobbyists that's funding the politicians. There's no way they're doing away with weapons. There's no way. And they're not going to be able to regulate just to say you can have handguns and you can't have, you know, semi-automatic assault rifles. That's just not going to happen. Like, it's way too much money involved in America for them to do away with weapons. You can go off and say, oh, this is doing a different time and this was for militia when uh, this amendment was wrote. But Here's what it is. We can we can slice it and cut it a bunch of different ways. And in this country, you have the right to bear arms and you're not going to be able to take that away from me to bear arms. That's just not going to happen. You want to start seeing all type of illegal weapons come out of trunks and come out of attics and come from behind those blades of grass. Then you start talking about taking weapons away from people. Then it's going to be a real problem. We all have the things that we like because we need to protect our families. But how many of you actually are training your children with weapons? For all my gun enthusiasts out there, like, what's your belief on that? And what do you think is a good age, you know, to start training your children how to use weapons? Yeah, no, it's definitely something that uh, it's in my future. My, my daughter is only, uh, my oldest daughter is only five, but uh, I plan on training her within the next two or three years. Of course, starting out with a BB gun, teaching her how to shoot, and then working her way up from there. Oh, yeah. I think that's very important. Uh, not at my house. You're going to get not a here, here, 10, 12, 10 or 12. I think, yeah, that is a good age. I think 10 or 12 is a good age because if you can hold your toothbrush, well, I ain't going to say if you can hold your toothbrush and brush your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, this one right here that's knocked out on my shoulder right now, uh, eight, 19 months and she can hold a toothbrush. So I guess I'll go ahead and start training her then. It was a video that I seen. It might have been like a couple years ago, but it was a uh, uh, little lady. She was probably between 10 or 12 and her dad. I don't know what he did, but he taught her how to shoot weapons. You've probably seen this video before. She was going through like a range in their backyard and she was going from the rifle to the handgun. And it just it reminded me when I first started playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare and I always wanted to reload during the training stage. And it would just be like, switch to your other weapon. It's faster. And I was watching that little girl. And she was just letting them go. Ping, 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 ping. And when she ran out, she just dropped it to the side, pull out her sidearm. And it's like the army don't even train infantry soldiers mm -hmm. to perform with weapons like that. 
Like they don't nope. train you really to perform with weapons like that. You don't spend enough time on weapons like that. And I think that's why most people probably didn't really, I ain't gonna say most people, but some didn't really care or they shooting wasn't even efficient because they didn't know their weapon well enough. You have people that know their weapons better than they know their wives. You know, I go, this is my weapon. This is my gun. This is for fighting. This is for fun. This hey, is for, you know. <laughs> hey, look, hey, big stars. That goes to a little uh, small topic that I had that also I brought up to you. It's like, uh, what did you name your rifle when you're in basic or when you're going overseas? Everybody had a name for their for their sweet loved one. So what can you remember the name that you named your rifle? I, I really not. can't. I remember naming it, but I can't remember the actual name. So I want to hear some of those names that their our fellow battles out there was calling there and uh, kind of uh, how it relate. Maybe it was to an old ex that you were dating at the time. Maybe it was uh you know, hey, maybe it was to uh, someone that you uh, dreamed about at the time. Yeah, I do not. I do what I do love though. What 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 trips me out though is when I watch these Hollywood movies and you see these stars like firing a two forty from the hip with one hand. You know, or what was that? John Travolta and Swordfish. He was firing the two four nines. I think he had like two of them. He was shooting at one time. And it's like, man. A weapon is powerful, but it's not that powerful. It's not knocking people through walls and things like that. Like, just knock it off, Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? You're giving the wrong impression. Most of right, those I guess it's everything, though, too. Yeah, most of, the, most of the weapons, if it can go wrong, it did go wrong. As powerful as that 50 cal was, it was like when you needed it most, that sucker went down on you. And if you didn't know how to, you know, if you didn't do proper maintenance, if you didn't know how to perform, I'll just say sports, which it wasn't sports on the 50 cal. It was something totally different. But if you didn't know how to form immediate action to get that weapon back up, then that weapon was really useless. If you didn't know how to maintain the weapon, then it's like, what's the point of you having it? Because then it becomes a paperweight. And I don't think some guys in the army or the army emphasized it enough to where you knew how to effectively put it back in the action. For some, not all people. I mean, I was pretty efficient with that to put it back in the action. But I think when you talk about, you know, special forces guys or you watch some of the documentaries and you hear some of the history, they train so much with those weapons. You definitely knew they probably had a name. They kept it. They slept with it. You know what I'm saying? They cleaned it more than they cleaned themselves because just like you have that physical weapon, that rifle in your hand, if you don't know how to use this weapon and if you don't know how to use these little extremities to make sure that weapon can function at the right time, then you're going to be in trouble. You know, it's sometimes nowadays people have guns and they don't even go to the range and know how to use them. Like this weapon doesn't make you Superman, but it's definitely an extension of your superpower. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's definitely I understand that. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, you gotta definitely know how to use it because it's like you were saying earlier, but it comes down to anything, everything, whether it's the government or whether it's a zombie apocalypse. If you don't know how to use it and you're just pulling it up and aiming it at somebody, you better know how to use it because the people that do know how to use it is gonna fire that trigger first and then ask the questions later. Cause I, I know that's the first thing I've always told even even my neighbors around here, they're like, You would really shoot somebody before you ask? Hell yeah. Because in, in the state of Texas, as long as uh, you're facing me. And it's not to the back, and you're on my property. I'm gonna I'm pop your ass. Then I'm gonna ask you why you're in the fucking property. Now that's another thing when we talk about weapons and the importance maybe of having weapons to protect your family and to protect your belongings and things like that. A lot of people don't on the civilian side, and maybe even in the army side. I don't think enough people do their research on, you know, you think just because you got the weapon and you went to class and somebody come on your property, you shoot them. Like you're not allowed to shoot them in the back if they running away. There's nope. so many things that they don't that they don't really tell you that they don't emphasize on. And for some people, like for me, I don't have a weapon. And if I once when I, I, I'm thinking about going to purchase me one, I would just go get me an M4 or something like that, a shotgun. But it's like, I don't have a weapon because if I have a weapon, I know exactly what it do. And if I pull it, it ain't to show it to you. This ain't show and tell. You know what I'm saying? Like when I show it's, it, it's going to tell you it's, something. It's telling you two has already came down range. You know, like if I show it, two has already came down range. Hey, line is green. Lane is green. Lane is green every time. <laughs> How close to the invisible cluck? 
Klukkoa? Klukka? Are we? All right, what's the Klukka uh, whiskey, Charlie? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm going to let you know my uh, my Uncle Terry over here. He also was a uh, – he was a Navy guy, so – I mean, I'm pretty sure that's probably a certain term, term maybe there, or maybe something else. That hey, man. That. I just switched my, I just switched my book out in my background. I usually got my Jay Z book up. Speaking of a Navy guy, I got my book up with this badass Navy guy right here, old Mister David oh, yeah. Goggins. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. And, yeah, I was reading in, uh some stuff on him and he was talking about weapons and things like that. And you know, this dude can, Oh, how many clacks cloaks. Okay. He was talking about, you know, how he didn't really care for weapons like that, but he was, you know, he was, he was a weapons guy, you know, he didn't really care for him, but he was a weapons guy and he understood the importance of knowing it and how it worked. I can remember days of being in the barracks, you know, especially before we deployed whiskey, Charlie, Sitting there blindfolded, breaking down the 249 and the 240 and the M6 and the M4 and your M9 and things like that because you had to know your weapon. I got you. Go ahead. Now, now that right there is a good old grunt. He just sat here on the show. We talking about weapons and all type of wild stuff, and he just rocked the baby to sleep. That's what we do, grunts. We always make adjustments. Again, the strongest weapon that you have is right here in your mind. If you don't know how to operate this weapon, you won't know how to operate any of these weapon systems that we talking about. Not efficiently, because you have to be able to make the decision when it's time to pull the trigger or when it's time to kind of ease back. The, the people that get it, they not just trigger happy and looking to spray and pray everything. They understand a weapon is kind of like learning karate. It's a defense mechanism. That's what it really is. It's a defense mechanism. This is kind of a last resort. Hopefully, I don't have to go to this route. But if I do, just know I'm going to be efficient what I'm doing with this thing, too. So we've talked about a few things. You know, I don't know if we've, we've had a few favorite weapons. And I guess for me, if I had a favorite weapon, it would be the M4 because that's one I'm really familiar with. So I'm pretty sure some weapons out there are way better than the M4. I didn't shot some AKs in my day. And I didn't shot some submachine guns in my day, you know, the, the army way, like some uh some little couple submachine nine millimeters and things that you know we've came across when we we're out on deployment. And I've had my fun with weapons. And of course, somebody mentioned earlier the Mark 19. I was in a vehicle called the ASV, which had a Mark 19 on the left and the 50 cal on the right. So <laughs> I was just like, you had a Mark 19. A 50 cal, and if you pop open a hatch, you had a mount for a 240. So <laughs> it was just like, you know. And you know what went what tripped me out as we were leaving Iraq, Risky Charlie. Remember, weapons turned into a whole new thing, it turned into a computer system. The weapon was the same, but then you had the crow system where you just sat in the back and you played a video game. I, I'm not able to hear you, brother. No, uh, I, I do remember that. Yes, the crow system. Yeah, dude. Oh, my God. Yeah, man, that's awesome. But uh, Mr. Charlie, give me one second real quick while you got that. I'll be right back. All right. Look, when, when it comes around to the whole crow system, I that, that'd be enjoyable safety for our fellow uh, battles out there. But uh, I can tell you this much, man. When it came to actually squeezing the trigger yourself and filling the rounds, go down that fucking barrel and, and lighting shit up and blowing things up, man. That was probably the most exciting thing to me ever. Uh, I think that's probably one of the things I can remember to a T when it comes to each one of the uh, weapons that I got to shoot in the military that I, I can remember. I can't remember people's names. I can't remember fucking, uh, you know, what I all did during a lot of things, but I can definitely can tell you I can remember every round that I shot and every feeling that I had when I was shooting each one of these weapons. So I can just tell you this much. Uh, being infantry, I, I, I thought that originally when I uh, joined up that I was uh, joined up the wrong way, but uh, I think infantry is the only way to go. Let's see here. Uh, spitting fire. Uh, Uncle Terry, my Uncle Terry on here. Terry said, uh, spitting fire from the spitting, uh, spitting fire from that mofo. Okay. Uh, spitting fire from that mofo. What is a? I don't know what A is, but oh, what's up, Whiskey Charlie? Big man on campus. How are you doing tonight? 
Oh, man. Uh, don't know if you're coming from the game, but I'm doing good. You know, hey, can't complain. If I did, ain't nobody fucking listen anyways. Just shut up and suck it up and drink some water and take some fucking Advil. You know how we do it in the military. So that's hey. what I do every day, man. It, it, look, I I can't complain. Because you know what? If you complain, there's somebody out there that's always worse than you, the situation that you wish you were in. So I'm not going to complain. I, I'm living life, man. I, I'm taking day by day. Hour by hour, minute by minute, man, and uh, just taking it, sucking it up, and keep rolling. I mean, you can't. Uh, I, I don't. I, outside of that, don't really know what to say on that piece right there. I mean, I, I love my life. I love what I have going on, and everything and everything. Thing, even even the problems, man. I love my problems, you know, because you know what, I, I can adapt. You know, I think that's what's uh, helped me out in the military is just adapting and overcoming those uh, situations. You know, it, it's, there are going to be some hardships, man. No, whether it's a death in a family, death as a friend, or maybe it's maybe it's money, maybe it's some things like that. But you know what? At the end of the day, it all works out. Uh, you just got to uh, keep your head held high, and you know what? what you're going to do the best of who you are. And every situation is going to be different for every every one. So I can tell you this much: that uh, I, maybe maybe I can handle certain situations better than anybody else, but other situations you may be able to handle better than I can. But uh, all you can do is look forward uh, and reaching out to a battle and uh, talking with somebody. That's why we're here, you guys. I want y'all to know that if you want to reach out and talk to somebody, that's what we're here for. And if you want to get on the show and talk about a certain topic, uh, as Big Sar said earlier, man, reach out. If you want to get on here, hey, come out here and preach to us. Let us know. Hey, maybe it's something that we don't know that y'all know that we can uh, touch on and we can we can grasp on and give y'all our opinion. Because you know what? That's all we have is opinion right now, you guys. There's so many opinions out there. So get out there and speak. You know, that's, uh, that's one of the biggest things I had to respect about this uh, show that we started is, you know, it's called, you know, we speak grunt, you know, it's about speaking, you know, talk out. doesn't matter what your opinion is on, on situations. We're going to listen. We're going to tell you our opinion. And guess what? We're just going to keep rolling because we all have the same idea. We're all out here to support our family, support our lives and keep rolling with the shit. Hey brother, I couldn't, uh... Uh, yeah, that was a perfect way to put it. That is a perfect way to put it. Terry said, uh, I missed your company policy on the vaccination. Are they going to start making, taking it or testing it every day? And that might be your company where you working at, uh, Whiskey Charlie. Nope. Uh, Home Depot is like, hey, you know what? Uh, you know what? You, I, mean, I, mean, I think it's pretty much a lot of retailers. I mean, they're pretty much, hey, you take your shot if you want to take it. And if you don't want to, hey. You know, go about your business. But uh, if they require me to wear a mask, I'll wear a mask, but I'm not getting a shot. If they start saying I require a shot, then I'm going to uh, be looking around. I'll, I'll find something that doesn't require to have a shot. But uh, they want me to wear a mask. I'll do that just for shits and giggles, just to please them and to also to make sure I'm doing what I need to do. But uh, at the end of the day, this guy is not getting no shot until I can see 100% effective for that uh for that uh vaccine yeah i hear you man hey and that's using the best weapon that you have you know the one in your skull using your brain because even if they oh, we, don't, we don't go there on mine man oh, no, you, you, are, you, you, know that, you know that weapon is strong because you just said something man i'm not willing to go take the jab just because somebody want me to or for a job, I believe the weapon that I have in my head is strong enough to put me and my family in a different position to do what we have to do financially in order to get through. I'm not selling myself out. You know what I'm saying? For they weapon or whatever it may be, you know, chemical weapon, biological weapon for whatever it may be, just for them to experiment on me. I would rather take a chance on this thing up here. So I'm crystal clear on what I need to do and how I need to make it through. You know, it's a lot of things that can be considered weapons and how to be used as a weapon. But the, the lesson in all of that is, again, training this weapon to use any weapon that you have in your hand, whether it's a bayonet, whether it's an old axe handle, whether it's an M9, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whether it's a garage, oh, well, you, gotta, you know, you got to go the fuck out. Net. You better watch the fuck out. It's easy. This knife hand, I will fucking use the shit out of that <laughs> the, shit, bro. The knife hand I mean, is probably the ultimate weapon in the <laughs> infantry. <laughs> you better whisk the fuck up, man. <laughs> <laughs> 
The nice I, hair will definitely get some people in order. I I try to use that at work, and they just looking at it like I'm stupid or something. <laughs> what the fuck up? <laughs> Better get the I'm, fuck over and do some work. I think I, I'm, the wife always tell me, Sarge, we ain't your soldiers. I'm gonna tempt to hit her with the knife hand and see if that works. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Are you about to slap me? No, you should not understand what this is. I will fucking murder somebody with some words. Terry says, as of Monday, they are going to require everyone that has had a vaccination to wear your mask and show a vaccination card before you can enter the building. If you have not had the vaccination, you will be required to take a test prior to entering the building and wear a mask all day long. So is that through your company? Is Terry at the in the same no, company? Oh, no, no, my uncle Terry, he works. Uh, he's in Florida, Jacksonville, ah. Florida. Yeah, he, he works for uh, an eye company. Yeah, they, they manufacture Man. eyeglasses, bro. Yeah, you got to have your eyes to be able to use your weapons effectively. So if he can see, he can shoot. Shoot the wings <laughs> off a <and> fly. <laughs> wow! Yeah, fuck that. You can see them dicks coming from a mile away when they got Man Love Thursdays. Isla Curtis says, I'm just waiting for these vaccines to create a zombie apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, think, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people are, so they can take their weapons out and have a little bit of fun. Or, hey, the all the military people, coming. they're like, we're ready, let's do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think, you know, and I know we just talking here and we having fun, man, but we're in the time and the space and the place that we probably thought we would never be. So, Nothing surprised me or nothing shocks me. Just like Whiskey Charlie, you was just saying, whether it's good or bad, you find a way not to a way not to complain and a way to maintain and just keep, keep, keeping on. Because at the end of the day, that's what you have to do. People are going to attempt to make decisions for you, but you have to make a decision that's going to be best for you. You have to make the decision that's going to be best for you and your family to get through. You know, we got a lot of people interested in the world today, and I'm pretty sure all of them have something to say. Oh, Joe Dirty. Hey, you got to keep on keeping on, baby. That's what they say, you know. <laughs> Yo, Joe Dirty, what's your, what's your perspective on weapons? Oh, you know, uh, my, my perspective on weapons here is, uh, hey, you know, it, it gives me a chubby just as much as uh, Mr. Whiskey Charlie on the other side over here. And uh, Big Sarge, I know you do feel in the same way, but uh, you got to, you know, have them uh, bottle rockets, you know, those whistling bung holes and everything, man. We, we, we got to live, <laughs> live in life. You got to let it go large and then charge. And you never had the opportunity, in all honesty, to, 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 to fire a machine gun. It is something definitely that's interesting, and mo most people probably haven't if you didn't join the military, if you're not really a gun enthusiast. But I tell you what, man, once you fire a 249 or 240 uh -huh. and you get your hands on a Mod Deuce, the 50 cal, or a Mark 19, it's hard just to go back to a regular, you know, 30 oh, yard yeah. six, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 M9. You know, there is nothing out there, especially from a handgun's point of view that's going to give you that effect of what a machine gun can do. You know, so... It's just this filling your titties just rabble. You know, you're just imagining <laughs> big boobies just going everywhere. You know, just that's that's why, you know, most of us uh, infantry love just shooting big, big machine guns. Yeah. Because you can just imagine there's a girl shooting it and just, it, that they're, they're just going everywhere. Just, yeah, it's just... Oh, well, hold up a second here. I, I thought I just farted, but I don't know what I'm just now smelling right now. But uh... <laughs> hey, look, that's funny <laughs> that you said that because when I had to disappear, I thought I had sharted on myself. <laughs> Son of a bitch! I swear to God, right now it smells like either a dog or me. I don't know who shit themselves, but. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, Terry says you can go out to Colorado Springs and head up the Dragon Man and hit up the head up the Dragon Man. He has a war hey. museum out there that looks awesome. Several fire ranges to fire automatic weapons and any that you want. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was no, just in Colorado uh, not too long ago. Yeah, like like uh that's the ones we shot over uh I can't remember and he probably can tell us here, but uh Man, he had this uh, shotgun that they, I think it was either 12 or 18 rounds that you can fire through that sound bitch automatic. And I remember him telling me, hey, just keep going until you can't handle it anymore. 12 gauge. 
just do, 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 do. Man, I can tell you what, man. That that uh, it wasn't no machine gun, but I can tell you what. When shooting that thing right there, that can give you a hard on so hard that you can drill through a fucking brick wall with. Yeah, what is that? The uh, is it a Benelli shotgun? That was uh, I think a pretty nice shotgun as well. It might have some uh, semi-automatic capabilities. These shotguns are doing some whole new things now. You know. Yeah. Yeah. These shotguns are going on a whole nother level. You can put multiple rounds in that chamber for real, for real, and really get to work. So it's interesting. Yeah. I uh, know the modifications that uh, my Uncle Terry had from, uh, from that from that Dragon Cat, man, that those were those were pretty legit uh, modifications. And that's one of the things that, you know, I know we're still reaching on path, reaching on time here, but uh, yeah. like what modifications that everybody like? Like I look, I like I like the ACOG rather than the red dot. I like the ACOG. I felt like I was more comfortable with the the ACOG shooting than with the red dot. Some people say they were a fan of the red dot. Uh, you know, that's another thing I want to try to reach out and uh, ask my optics. our fellow infantrymen optics. What type of optics or what type of attachment made you shoot as well as you did? Because I know, I think uh, out of the probably 20, 30 times that we were shooting and certifying. I probably got expert probably about two or three times, but uh, you know it's always due to maybe an extra modification. It's always the ACOG that I had. Mm -hmm. Now whether it was a bipod or not a bipod or you know you know whatever else, uh, I felt like the ACOG it was always it was my bees knees. I could hit the three hundred yard one easy hands down, but uh, when it was ACOG coming up close, I'd always I'd always uh, hit missed like the you know hundred hundred fifty yard maybe once or twice, but. I was, I was hitting, you know, 36 out of 40. And that's the thing about optics, you know, again, going back to the military and training, a lot of times, you know, people just didn't have enough trigger time with their optics. You know, the uh, red dot CCO, the M68 or whatever, that was more for CQB. That was really just like aim, you know, lift and squeeze. You know what I'm saying? Close quarter combat. You put that red dot on there, you let it go. But if you didn't really understand, if you didn't, if you had your, 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 your dot, your light turned up too high, then that dot, it will mask the whole silhouette at 300 or 250. And you really couldn't understand what you were putting it on. But with that ACOP, you just look at those chevrons and you put it right where it need to yeah. be. And that's the thing. Yeah. A lot of people didn't know how to adjust or they didn't adjust quick enough when it was a closer target with the ACOG. So yeah, it definitely, um, when you talk about optics, just like when you talk about weapons, with any weapon, with any optic, you have to understand how to use the equipment that you have in your hand, or you're not going to be efficient. You can hey, have a- I think uh, Mr. Isaiah said down here, he's talking about using the equipment in your hands. Hey, he said he's only equipped with a frying pan, hey. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do, man. Frying pan. <laughs> hey, uh, maybe, hey, maybe a, good it's a, frying, a good old frying pan, especially if it's a cast iron frying pan, will work night, very night. well. As a night, night. <laughs> that will work very well as a weapon. You gotta know how to use the weapon in your hand. Because if you don't know how to use the weapon in your hand, you're in trouble, you know? So yep. yeah, it does it don't matter what it is that you have, you know. I can take this pen. And do damage with this pen if I have to. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure. So maybe damage. use this remote. I would fuck somebody up. <laughs> Anybody else got anything strange around their hand right now or in front of them that they can use as a weapon right now? Just look in front of you. If you had to pick up something in front of you, what would that weapon be? Is it going to be successful or how would you use that weapon? Go ahead and drop uh, that I'm down gonna... in the chat. Yeah, let us know. Let us know what you feel. Maybe one of those old school guys like Big Sarge used to be, and you got a big stupid five pound wallet full of paper, not money either, that you just beat them <laughs> to death with. You know uh, a bunch of a bunch of IOUs in that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you hit them with a different type of credit card swipe. Go right across the throat. <laughs> Better watch out. That's that's past due, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, we, you know, I know we on here, we just having fun and unfortunate and unfortunately it's about that time. So we going to get ready to run. My gun was the Rock Island Armory. My gun was the Rock Island Armory VR 
80 shotgun. The, the, okay, that's I, I remember I was telling you about the uh, weapon my uncle Terry had. Yeah. It was the that's what he's saying is a VR 80 shotgun. Okay, and I think I want to say I, I, if if I remember it's either 12 or 18 shotgun, 12 gauge shotgun rounds. 12 gauge. Got the shit out of there. Yeah, yeah, 12 gauge, 12 that gauge, was 18 a, gauge, 10 gauge. Yeah, that was a fucking belt. It was a fucking. If you say magazine, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, it was a round magazine. Yeah, I got you. Just, you. And she just got man. It's just like ah, oh, just talking about it. Just got my nips near hard right. Just talking about <laughs> it. it was the X eighteen. He said, "Yeah, eighteen rounds, eighteen rounds." Yeah, I remember, yeah. That's Woo. that's a lot of firepower for a shotgun. Yeah, that dude. is definitely yeah. a lot of firepower. Going with buck shots on that son of a bitch too. Whoo! Like, tank, well, tank, 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 tank. Poor little tank, tank. Any any weapon that you have, just be efficient with your weapon. Just yep. be efficient with your weapon. Doesn't, it doesn't matter how many you have. Doesn't matter how many you have. Just make sure you have enough ammo. Hey, as long as you have enough ammo, that's what at the end of the day, you can be efficient with any type. You can have, I got 60 different guns. Okay, do you know how to shoot them? No, but I got 60 different guns. Okay, well, it ain't going to do you any fucking good. Hey, do you no. know how to shoot them? Okay, well, I know how to shoot. Uh, I've shot two of them. Okay, well, you're proficient with two of them. Okay. Yeah. You gotta make sure you don't get to those and make sure you don't have enough ammo on those motherfuckers. Hey man, I've met a I've met a I've met a uh, well I have a friend of mine that attends the church that I go to and he has more weapons than any of my infantry buddies' house I've ever been to. And he was Damn. not in the military. Damn. <laughs> he had like a gun safe for the gun safe. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit. <laughs> well, one of those zombie apocalypse pretty motherfucker. Hey. I'm talking about the old our old pastor before he passed away to go home with Jesus. He was packing. Like, so if anybody oh. came in the church, it was a problem. It was like <laughs> right. Hey, Jesus is about to meet you right now. We're gonna pray <laughs> for you. <laughs> like the boon, what was that? Not the Boondock Saint. What was that movie? Uh, was it Boondock Saints? Because Boondocks is a cartoon, yeah. Boondock Saints, those two brothers who was the name, they would pray before they wouldn't wipe their body out. So yeah, yeah, you know it's they're, they're, um, they're doing God's good. Weapons are a very important thing, man. They can they can strengthen you and they can weaken you if you don't know really what you're supposed to do with those weapons. It's really just an extension, again, of this weapon. So if you got this weapon in order, then you'll know how to use the weapons that you put in your hand, and you'll be efficient with those too, man. So. As you continue to grow in life and you continue to move forward in life, make sure you get this weapon right. So if you have to get your hands on the weapon, then you'll be in the right mind to use that weapon at the right time and be able to move on in life. Because we have a lot of brothers in out here who talk good about wanting to do weapons and use weapons. But then when they actually had to use their weapon, then this weapon right here is kind of stuck in trauma and, and tragedy. And they don't know how to get past those things that we happen to see, you know, those things that we happen to do. So my advice or my my advice would be or my opinion would be make sure you continue to work on this weapon so you can find your way through. You know what I'm saying? You work on this weapon, use the weapon in your chest, your heart, you know, to feel some things that you need to and use this one when you have to turn that one off. So you can use the weapon in your hand to really get through and be the man or the woman that you're supposed to be to protect your family because here in America, we ain't going to ever lose the right to bear arms because if they attempt to take that away, it's going to be a lot of weapons that come out to play. So watch out. That's it. That's all for me. That's all I really have to say. We've kept you a little bit longer today. So we want to make sure we let you go. And if it's something that we miss, please drop it down in the chats so we can talk about that and follow up with that next week. And if it's something that you want to leave, please leave it down in the comments and the chats. If like Whiskey Charlie says something you would like to see us talk about, hear us talk about, or something that's just important to you, drop that down in the chat too and I'll leave you. We would love to have you on the show if you want to just come on and talk about it a little bit more and have a little bit fun. And uh, that's it. That's all I got for you. Whiskey Charlie, you got something to say to the people before we close out today? Hey, you guys, uh, just like I posted in the post on here, man, speak, listen, and learn, man. Hey, uh, speak out, listen, and then learn something. Hey, uh, you may not have all of it. Uh, maybe you have something out there for someone. So don't be afraid to speak out. You know, speak grunt. That's why we're out here. You know, speak out, 
speak out to our fellow brothers out there, whether it's something, uh, whether it's something you went through, whether it's something that uh, you've seen somebody go through, that man, that's helpful advice. You know, you know, it's still out there that they, you know, 22 people, uh, 22 of our uh, battles out there is uh, doing suicide, you know? Yes. So just make sure uh, you reach out to your battle. Hey, maybe it's been a while since you talked to them or maybe you wasn't too fond of them, whatever else, whatever it is, it is, man, just reach out to somebody, touch somebody, whether it's a, uh, you know, maybe it's a word, maybe it's, you don't have to give them anything. Uh, maybe it's a word, maybe it's a helpful advice, maybe it's, hey, you know, just greeting them. Maybe a lot of our battles out there just doesn't have that, maybe maybe they don't have that someone out there to reach out to and talk to. So maybe it's just reach out there and just uh, talk to them, just hey, give them a, hey, what's up, how you doing? You know, and that, 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 that shows them that somebody out there that cares. So uh, to all of our battles out there that's uh, struggling from those type of situations, hey, don't be afraid. Uh, if you don't know who I am, of course, Whiskey Charlie, uh, a.k.a. Justin. Uh, and then Big Sarge out here, just reach out to us. Let us know what you're feeling. Let us know what you're going through. And uh, if we don't know how to get help you get taken care of, I'm, I'm going to reach out uh, reach out and find you some help. I'm going to help you find the answers you need. But uh, definitely, that's what we're here for. We're here for each other uh, to the end, from the beginning to end, whether you're with, with me in squad or you're here on us with a speak grunt, uh, just reach out to us because you, you are now part of our family. Hey, man, again, we thank you for your time, for sharing your time with us. You can be doing something else. You can be anywhere else. We thank you for supporting us. We thank you for commenting. We thank you for sharing these videos. We just thank you for being a part of our flow. Like Whiskey Charlie said, if there's anything that you need that we can help you do, send us a direct message and we'll do what we can to help you pull it through, man. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's asking you to be perfect, but we are asking you to perfectly speak your mind so you can get what you need on time. Continue to train this weapon and any weapon that you put in your hand, you will be efficient with, man. That's it. This has been Grunt Speak. Speak Grunt. By Grunts for Grunts. Everybody welcome, but everybody cannot or will not be a member. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful Thursday. Don't forget to tune in on Sunday where we will run this back as the replay, kind of like an original day. So it'll be posted up on the YouTube at 23rd Day. And go to the YouTube channel at Speak Grunt and subscribe too. And next time you come on, bring a friend with you. Do me a favor and share this with seven friends and seven strangers, man. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful day. We out.